What is happening, people? It is Brian Alls, WhateverSafe.com, and today's video is gonna be all about how to do the dip. Now, before any of you go and you click off the video, because dips make your shoulders, elbows, wrist, sternum, clavicle, soul hurt, you are not alone. I'm in the exact same boat. In fact, this is a visual of my very first, and I'm not lying about this, this was my very first rep rep or two that I did when I was recording the moving parts for this video. Uh, that's exactly how it feels for me too, guys. It just takes me a little bit of time to get warmed up. And then there are a lot of things I've learned over the years that help me stay pain-free as well as moving more weight or being able to do more reps of the dip that I'm gonna try to share with you today. But first, before we get into that, it's a really exciting time here at Never Say That Thanks. The first thing is that tomorrow, a bunch of our members are gonna be competing in a local strongman competition. So to each and every single one of you, I just wanna say good luck and I love you guys. You guys are my family. It is so, so cool. Um, just go out, do what you guys know to do. Secondly, uh, next week, I will be on the Bar Bend podcast. A lot of you I know listen to the Bar Bend podcast. So should be pretty cool to be on there. And then I'm actually headed out to Elite FTS to go lift with Dave Tate and his crew and then do the Dave Tate uh, Table Talk pod podcast. So all really, really cool things for exposure and maybe getting to tell a little bit of my story and those types of things. So really, really cool. But for right now, because of that last video when I was talking about my triceps and how dips were one of the biggest reasons for me having larger arms as well as my pressing power, a lot of people have asked me to do a how-to dip because they just go through so much pain and everything that they just avoid them entirely. So with that in mind, this video is gonna be dedicated to give you guys some ideas that are gonna help you out. All right, so the first set of changes I wanna talk about are gonna have everything to do with your hands. Now, first thing I want you to do is look at your dip bar setup and whether you have straight bars, whether they're angled, whether they are narrow, whether they're wide, and I want you to play around with different things because for some people, just switching up the method in which they're doing it to an angle bar to a straight bar or a wide grip to a more narrow grip, sometimes that can take your pain away. But no matter what you are deciding to do with those bars, wherever you're putting them, when you get to your least painful position, the one thing that I do want you doing is make sure that the heel of your palm is actually the part making contact with those bars. Now guys, I know it should go without saying, however, I still see a lot of athletes trying to support all their body weight on something other than the heel of their hand. They're kind of floating out more towards the palm, which is giving them really weak power transfer as well as sticking their wrist kind of in a dicey situation. So do make sure that you are using the heel of your palm to actually place on those bars also. When you are doing this, you want to be squeezing those handles as hard as you possibly can because your body works synergistically, like I've mentioned 10,000 times before, uh, but you will be stronger just by simply squeezing that bar harder. Now, another thing that not a lot of athletes know about is that you can kind of direct where you're gonna be feeling this exercise just by what you do with your hands. So, first off, if you guys think about throttling your motorcycle, all right, if you turn, to turn the throttle on, you twist your wrist back. When you want to turn the throttle off, you twist your wrist forward. That's all you're gonna need for this visualization because if you're using more of your triceps, you're going to want to turn the throttle on. Now, remember, you are squeezing that bar as hard as you possibly can, so you do not actually twist on this bar whatsoever. It's just the intention that you're putting into it. You are trying to twist and externally rotate your hand while you are going through this motion. Now, if you're trying to focus more on your chest, then it would probably behoove you to do the turn the throttle off method or internally rotate your wrist. Just try to crank it down. Again, you're not actually twisting on the bar at all. You're squeezing as hard as possible with a locked wrist, but you're still putting this or that intention into the bar and you'd be amazed at how much more you will either feel your pecs or your triceps in the exercise. Now I know many of you watching this are saying, yeah, yeah, I've tried all those things. I still get a lot of pain. And the reason why could very well because of your dip station, wherever you're doing them, they're just keeping your shoulders a little bit too internally rotated. If that might be the case for you and you feel a little bit better with them, a little bit more opened up, a lot of people will find less pain if they do them on top of boxes or benches or some way to suspend themselves up just so that they can keep your shoulders a little bit more open. The only thing I'll say about this is just be very, very careful. When I was recording this, this is, not safe at all. I was very lucky that I didn't do something bad. So you are gonna figure out some way in your gym to do that safely, I hope. Or not. And final note on this general part of the video, if you guys are not strong enough to currently be able to do dips and you wanna do something like a bench dip, you can. I would just say that it might be a little bit Dicey on your shoulders, so what I'd rather see you do is take something like a slingshot, coupon code die empty, make sure it's two words. But if you do not have that type of disposable cash laying around, guys, all that you need to do is take a resistance band, simply double it up, and then stick it on top of your arms the same exact way that you would use a slingshot, and then it pretty much just decides to throw you out of the bottom of a dip like you are weightless. Now, of course, you can use different levels of resistance bands for different levels of resistance or help, and uh, it just it's a great way to do it if you can no longer do dips. I'd rather see you do that 
Then bench tips just simply for the shoulder complicating pingy problem area hurty surgery stuff. All right, so for the most part, that should be taking care of your hands. From there, I want to move on to what to do with your body and just some changes you're gonna do there. The biggest problem that I see most people do when they are performing the dip is that they lead with their chin, meaning that they start out at the top and the first thing that goes is their chin starts pointing down towards where their head because the body always follows the head. But what this also does is puts you in kind of a shrug for the start of this movement, which is sticking your shoulders in a much more grindy, teary, uppy position. You do not want to do that. Instead, what I'd rather see you do is in the top position of the dip, kind of put yourself in like a superhero pose, okay? You're gonna want to lead with your chest, which means you're gonna punch it through your arms just a little bit, but not so much that it's obnoxious. I want you guys to think about kind of the bottom portion when you're setting up a deadlift. You want to be sticking kind of your shoulder blades in your back pocket so that you are not fully doing like a lat spread but you're also not completely sticking your chest. Your neck should be neutral and you're just kind of in a reverse shrug pose standing up top. I personally do not think it is a good idea to start your dip with retracted shoulder blades. I would much rather see you pushing them down and back. Also realize that what you're doing with your lower body can greatly determine what happens with your upper body. For instance, if you want to work your chest, generally speaking, you're going to want to have a little bit more forward lean in this movement. Now, an easy way to do that is just simply cross your legs and stick them behind you. That will naturally start to tilt your body, which will have you just focusing a little bit more on your chest. Conversely, if you want to work more of your triceps, you're going to want to stay more upright. So what I end up doing is actually crossing my legs in front of me, and this allows me to stay in more of an erect upright position, throwing more of the pressure onto my anterior delts as well as my triceps, just in the movement in general. So what you're doing with your lower body can absolutely affect what you are doing with your upper body. And again, the leaning and the positioning of your body can greatly affect just what muscles you're kind of targeting. Whichever way you are deciding to focus, just remember, do not lead with your chin. Because again, if you start the movement in a shrug and you finish in kind of a superhero pose, you're just kind of grinding on your shoulders. Same way that you do if you were doing a heavy barbell shrug, just rolling your shoulders around. It is absolutely terrible for them. Do not do that. Keep them down and back and locked. Keep your chin neutral, leave your chest. Make sure you're keeping that position the entire movement. Now, when we move on to talk about the actual descent, what I want you guys to think about is when a pregnant lady sits down, she doesn't just flop herself down onto a couch. What she does is pushes her knees out so she has room to receive her body. Once she can get down low enough to hinge, she can go. I want you to do the same exact thing here. I don't want you to just disengage your elbows and let your chest shoot down towards that bar. That is where a lot of that pain is gonna come from. Instead, what I want you to do is still be engaging with your hands the way that we were talking about, except now, instead of just disengaging, I want you to slowly start pushing your elbows out and back to create some room to start receiving your body in between your arms. As far as the depth is concerned on a dip, I personally don't care that much. I know there are some people out there that don't consider it legit unless they can see like your face underneath your hands, but then there's other people who just kind of like quarter rep and are just kind of working the top portion. And I do think there is a place for that. I think if you're just trying to keep all the tension on your triceps and you're not really taking it off in the way and that's a very specific thing, then knock yourself out. But don't go on the internet calling it a dip. Uh, and I also don't think it's very useful to try to drop as deep as possible every single time. And if you are a larger human being in general, whether it be muscle or body fat, uh, that's gonna be a really tough thing to do. So for me personally, I just try to get around parallel. I try to hit parallel. If I do, great. If I don't, it's not that big of a deal to me. I just make sure that I get a good stretch across my tricep and then I reverse the motion. Now, there are two different ways to reverse this motion. The first is gonna be going for like reps or power or like if you're doing weighted dips, this is how you're gonna do it. The first thing I want you to do is as you're applying force out of the bottom of the dip, I want you to push into those bars like you're pushing them away from you. I don't want you to think about pushing your body up. I think want you to think about your body being locked in a position and you're trying to push those bars away from you. As soon as you get about about half the way up, I want you to start thinking about jamming your elbows in towards the sides of your body. Much like when you're finishing a deadlift and you flex your butt to bring those hips through, I want you doing the same thing with your triceps and your elbows here. Now, if you're just doing the dip to build some bigger pecs and you wanna keep the focus very, very much on that and you don't care so much about doing a ton of reps or moving a bunch of weight, what I want you to do is keep that internally throttle off position that you're doing on the bars already, but keep that control the entire time throughout the motion. Now, when you were coming out of the bottom, I want you to think about almost doing a dumbbell fly in place of a dip. So that 
crushing in motion is just continue all the way up and then as you get to the top, you can even focus on squeezing in like you would at the top of a fly. Now again, remember, you will not be able to do nearly as many reps in this fashion or if you're doing weighted dips, you won't be able to need nearly do nearly as much weight. However, if you're just doing for hypertrophy and you want to just focus on your pecs, that is the best way to do it. Also, for those of you wondering exactly where you should be touching your chest on a dip, it's gonna change from athlete to athlete. What I'd rather see you do is take a video of yourself doing some dumbbell rows from the side, getting a pause up at the top, and wherever you put that dumbbell is most likely gonna be very similar to the bottom position of your dip. If you're further back, you'll be further back on the dip. If you're further forward, you'll be further forward on the dip. It's just kind of where your body likes to be. Which brings us to the last portion of the video, where we talk about the weighted dip. Now, I love doing bodyweight dips. I think they're amazing, but I can do an awful lot of them before I get a real training effect. So I have to start adding weight to myself, and you can do this with a fancy weight belt for pull-ups and dips if you would like to for a certain amount of money. However, that is completely unnecessary because all that you need is basically to go to the hardware store and buy a piece of chain. In fact, this chain that I'm holding in a carabiner was the very first piece of fitness equipment that I ever bought for myself. That's not actually true. This chain that I'm holding was the very first piece that I ever bought myself, except uh, I didn't plan it out well, and that's why it's incredibly too short to do this with. So, the other chain. Yeah. Now, I do know some of you do have access to some very large chains and you wanna stick them around your neck. However, I think that's better for selling protein than it is actual lifting because that's gonna throw you a little bit more forward, throwing a little bit more pressure on your shoulders. I would much rather see you hang any weight that you're gonna to add to your body from your waist so it's kind of like an extension of your spine or at least it's gonna keep that weight loaded over top the center of your hand, over top the center of your shoulder, where it's gonna create a lot more safe environment for you to be pushing weight through. But safety being paramount, I will tell you that you do need to keep these plates awfully close to your body. If you don't, it will swing around, it'll hit you in the knees and eventually when you jump down, it will bounce up and hit you other places. So if you do keep that suspended weight very close to your body, you'll be able to manage it a lot easier. I would recommend always having some sort of step to get onto the bars with. Never ever jump to bars when you have some weight on you, whether it is for a pull up or a weighted dip. That is just an injury waiting to happen and a mistake and a lot of things kinda flying around some sensitive areas. So what I'd rather see you do is just pull over a box or a step or whatever you can do so that you can climb up on top of that thing and then slowly release the tension of the weight onto the bars and then you can start your reps. But do not jump onto those bars. Other than that, you just follow those same cues that we were talking about before, except now it's weighted and you will make progress twice as fast. So guys, that is a very basic idea of some of the stuff that I do on the dip to make it less painful, you'll be a little bit stronger, you'll feel a little bit more solid. Um, hopefully there's some of you out there who have never been able to do dips that will be able to just because some of these tips. Try those different things with your hands, with the grip, with the twisting, with everything else and just see if you can get something to engage or disengage or fire so that maybe you won't get so much pain throughout because it's such an awesome and beneficial exercise. I'm telling you, one of the biggest reasons why I have large triceps and a large press is 100% because of the weighted dip. So guys, that is it for me. Thank you guys so much for staying with me throughout this entire thing. Hopefully some of you will be doing dips now. Keep an eye out for that Bar Bend podcast, for the podcast on Elite FTS, maybe some other lifting material on EliteFTS.com. It should be really, really great, guys. I'm just excited for all these opportunities and just saying yes to things instead of having to say no because of being too sick. So really, really cool time. So, so happy. Thank you guys for the support. I will catch up later in the week. Until I do go out to something amazing in my lives, keep working on people. Be nice to each other. I'll see you then.